today we are going to make a house that comes out of the ground. First the ground opens and then the house comes up. When the house goes down, the ground closes again, so it's pretty well hidden. This tutorial will be to make this thing in Bedrock Edition, but I have a tutorial on Java as well, which I will put up as a card. As a matter of fact, the demonstration you are seeing now is the one from Java Edition. Because my PC has trouble recording Bedrock Edition, because it doesn't have the replay mod. Which means I'll be going back and forth in this video, where I show the block placement using the replay mod and I show what it looks like with laggy Bedrock screen recordings. Here is the demonstration of what it could look like in Bedrock Edition. As I said it looks very laggy because of my bad computer, but I'll put up a link to the world map in the description so you can see how much better it looks on your console. This build is more complicated than the Java build because we have to jump through more hoops, but we have the advantage that the house can be way more functional since chests and furnaces can be pushed in Bedrock, which isn't possible in Java. Just like in Java, you could also let the house go to a secret base, but I don't recommend it because it looks pretty glitchy to be in the house when it's moving, even when you have a better PC. Before we go into the tutorial, I'd like to recommend you to build this thing in creative. It is possible to do it in survival because it doesn't use command blocks, but you should know what you're doing when building this kind of thing, so first try it out in creative mode. Alright, let's get into the tutorial. We need to be able to open and close the floor, which is something I'm going to be outsourcing. For the design I have in mind, we need to open this area. I'm going to build it in the air to better show the redstone, but this should be your floor and all the rest needs to be underground. The bottom 6x8 area we're going to open using an expandable drawbridge design by FedEx Gaming. Follow his tutorial until minute 1430 where I placed stone bricks to show where you need to build it. When you've done that, you should have something like this. An important tip I forgot to give is to always back up your world before testing a part of the machine, because flying machines tend to break really quickly with just the smallest mistake, and it's very annoying to rebuild. Now build exactly the same thing on the other side, where you make sure that the honey blocks will crash into slime blocks and the other way around, so they don't end up sticking together when the floor is closed. Next we'll need to make sure the sides get opened as well. We're going to use another design by FedEx Gaming for this, where we build one side of his other drawbridge design. You should follow that tutorial until minute 8.30, which should leave you with something like this. Important to note is that the design doesn't take into account the amount of blocks that we're going to be pushing, because there are also blocks at the side of the sticky blocks, which we'll need to fix with an extra pulse, so that the back piston doesn't see more than 12 blocks, which is the push limit of pistons, which means the piston can't extend if it sees more than 12 blocks in front of it. Alright, let's get into fixing it. I placed two full repeaters and a two tick repeater that feed into the activation block. I bring the same signal downwards, which I use to activate an observer that also feeds into the activation block. I also connect the signal with the rest of the floor using a repeater, so it opens with the flick of one lever instead of two. I simply repeat this process for the other three sides, which leaves me with something like this. We'll connect the levers later in the video, but for now we can at least open and close the floor so we can move on. Now let's start building the actual house. Make sure the floor is closed for easy reference. Place 6 immovable blocks like obsidian under this part and also do it on the floor, but do it 2 more blocks towards each other. What I call the floor isn't where the floor of the house is going to end up when it's underground, but it's the lowest point of redstone. 
This should be at least 20 blocks lower than the grass blocks. The floor of the house will be 10 blocks higher than my sandstone level. On top of the obsidian I start building the flying machine that brings the house up and down. I alternate honey and slime blocks because those don't stick together meaning we can get around the 12 block push limit of pistons. Make sure to pay attention to how I'm placing the observers because they have to face that way for the machine to work. Before we press the button to send the machine up, we should add a return mechanism, which you can make using a line of cobblestone with redstone on top of it, that we can activate using a button. Don't forget to pack up your world before testing the machine. Alright, let's test it. I first open the floor so that there is room and then I press the button, which sends the machine upwards. I can then simply return the machine using the two lines of cobblestone. Now let's build a house that gets dragged along by this machine. I go up one block above the sticky pistons and I place glazed terracotta. This has to be glazed terracotta, but you can choose which color. Then it's time for the essential sticky blocks. I once again alternate between honey and slime, but I go for symmetry because some of these are going to be visible and I like it more when it's symmetrical. These are the essential blocks that will be the skeleton of the house. We'll add some more decorative blocks later, but these are the ones that need to be there for the design to work. Now we can build the house itself. Each segment already takes up 4 blocks, but we can add blocks until there are 11 blocks. You can come up with your own house design here, as long as you make sure that each segment pushes 11 blocks maximum. When you're done, I highly recommend you back up your world before sending the house upwards.
If we were to send the machine downwards, the house wouldn't follow because the sticky pistons can't pull the glazed terracotta. That's why we'll need to pull the house apart to shift the block above the sticky piston to a sticky block. First let's build a little bit more of the floor now that we see how the house is going to end up. The opening floor will slide under this part. Now let's build a contraption that pulls the house apart to shift the block. We'll need a double piston extender for this. The reason we can't just use one piston is because that would mean that piston would then stick to the sticky blocks when the house wants to go down, which we don't want. To build a double extender, I use droppers that get activated which get detected by observers. Make sure the observers are facing the right way. Don't use the double extenders yet unless you make a backup world to test them. Like I said, you shouldn't test the double piston extenders yet, but here I show in a backup world what it should look like. Here I show you why you shouldn't do this yet. We get a problem when we send the house downwards. When the house is at the bottom, we'll want to shift the block above the sticky piston again. But if we let it go all the way down, this is no longer possible, because we push everything along. The workaround is to make sure the piston is extended when we try to do our shift, because an extended piston isn't sticky. The problem with this is that we have to do this before the piston arrives, since that means we can no longer get the terracotta in the desired position. This means that we'll need to keep the piston powered right when it arrives which is pretty hard because the timing gets a bit complicated like I show here. If we activate the brake before the machine arrives, the bottom piston will be the one that gets stopped, which means our contraption doesn't arrive. This means we need to activate the brakes in the small time frame between the first piston passing and the second piston arriving. Because the timing is so crucial, we should first connect the two cobblestone lines so they can get activated at once. I know that one observer on each side will see me changing the redstone dust, so I temporarily place an obsidian under the corresponding flying machine. Now we can just connect the two lines by going around our current contraption. You'll need to place repeaters to extend the signal far enough, but you'll have to make sure the delay on which the two sides get activated is exactly the same. I place one full repeater between the lever and one line, which means I can place four single tick repeaters on my way to the other line. Don't forget to break the obsidian when you're done. Now let's bring the signal downwards using the slime block method of vertical redstone. For now, I don't connect this to anything yet, because we'll still need to add our delay that gets the timing right. 
Now let's build breaks for our machine. Use temporary blocks to go up and place obsidian as block number 8. Turn this into two lines of obsidian that are connected to each other with redstone on top of them. Now let's add our delay. We'll use a hopper timer for this, which you can build like this. The delay changes based on the amount of items you put in one of the hoppers. To get an estimate of how many items you need, you can count how many blocks there are if you start counting from the obsidian breaks and you end at the floor of your house. For me, these are 19 blocks. I then use this formula to get my estimation. I counted 19 blocks, which means I have to put in 29 items for the timing to work. Now let's test the build. I place the last necessary repeater before I send the machine down. I don't let it pull the house yet to make sure the timing works. This way we don't have too many problems when it's not where we want it to be. I have to unflick the lever before I can press the button because the flying machine can only work if the brakes aren't active. Now let's automate the bottom button. We can just do this with a lever signal as long as we make sure we put in 7 more ticks of delay between the deactivation of the brakes and the activation of the flying machine. Now let's add a double piston extender that shifts the block above the stop piston to terracotta. Pay attention to how I place the observers and in which direction I place the 4 tick repeaters.
Alright, now we just need to place a 4 tick repeater between the brakes and the double piston extenders and our house will fix itself. If we flick the lever on top, the house should go up. Now let's also make sure the lever can send the house downwards. I place 8 repeaters between the lever and the observers. We need this delay because we also want to use the activation lever to pull the house apart, which needs to happen first. In this clip I accidentally mess up the connection with the vertical redstone piston, but you'll see me fix it later. Now let's use the signal to activate the top double piston extenders. These work based on a pulse, so we use an observer to turn the lever signal into a pulse. Observers give a pulse that's too short though, so we use a comparator pulse extender to fix this. Before we can test this, I fix the delay of the vertical piston like I said earlier. This way, the hopper timing still makes sense. Now we can bring the house up and down using the lever. Now it's time to finish the opening floor. Make sure you first send the house downwards and then connect the four levers of the opening floor. I realized this line still needs a repeater to each side, so I place it before I flick the lever to open and close the floor. We're almost there. Before we can connect our last two levers, we need to make sure the top double piston extenders don't push when the floor is closed, which we can do with this contraption here.
Now we can connect the two levers. I first changed this repeater to one tick on one side, which helps with making the build a little less buggy looking. Now we need to place 20 full repeaters of delay between the house and the opening floor. In this clip I accidentally only placed 19, but you'll see me fix it later. We only want this delay to be in effect when the house needs to go down, so I add a little contraption that makes sure the floor opens quickly when the house needs to go up. Alright, we're basically done, aside from some mistakes that need some quick fixing. Somehow the vertical piston mistake slipped in again, so I fix it again, after which I change the delay of these two repeaters to get the desired 20 repeaters of delay. Now we are finished. The lever will open the floor before sending the house up and close it back after sending the house down. Now you just need to cover up the redstone and your build is finished. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I also like to remind you that there is a world download in the description that could help you if you're having any trouble. Finally I'd like to quickly show how you could add another floor, because it's actually not very complicated. You'll need to build a higher elevation next to it, but that's basically everything. This time you don't need to build a block swapper, because the piston itself gets swapped. Only thing you need to do is make sure that each extra piston pushes exactly 12 blocks, so one extra block will make the pistons not push which you can use to make the second floor stop at the right place with some careful timing. 